The NHL trade deadline is now one week away and things are heating up as the Boston Bruins and Washington Capitals make a major deal. We'll break it all down for you, plus our women's hockey spotlight and a great weekend of hockey ahead. All that and more on today's Locked On NHL podcast. Your Locked On NHL, your daily podcast on the National Hockey League. Part of the Locked On Podcast Network. Your team every day. Happy Friday, everybody, and welcome to the Friday edition of the Locked On NHL podcast, part of the Locked On Podcast Network, your team every day. And thanks for making Locked On NHL. Your first listen every day, we are free and available on all platforms. This episode is brought to you by FanDuel Sportsbook, official sportsbook of Locked On. Make every moment more. Visit FanDuel.com slash Locked On today to get started. It is my pleasure to be joined every Friday by my co-host, Rachel Donner. You can find her on Twitter at rmiriam. I'm Gil Martin. You can find me at Ice Wars, NYR, VSNYI, and happy Friday, Rachel. Happy Friday. It is an exciting time in the NHL. Uh, we are rapidly approaching that trade deadline. One week, one week left before we read. then start the playoff push. Yeah, the, the season is going by so fast. Uh, only about 20 games, give or take, for most teams at this point, 20 to 25 games. And uh, trade deadline, always a very, very exciting time. And the Boston Bruins, the latest team to jump in and, and make a big splash on Thursday. They make a, a deal. They acquire a, a defenseman and a depth forward as they make their push in the very competitive Eastern Conference, they get Dmitry Orlov and Garnett Hathaway from the Capitals. In return, Washington gets Craig Smith and the 1-2-3 draft combination, a, a 2023 first, a 2025 second, and a 2024 third. And yeah, the Minnesota Wild got a fifth round pick for retaining some of Orlov's salary. Uh, Rachel, your thoughts on what this deal means for the Bruins, first of all? Well, yeah, first off, how dare the Boston Bruins get even better? I mean, <laughs> this is a juggernaut of a team this season. They are very clearly going for it with the draft picks that they have given up in their recent deals. And this is the perfect deal for them, I got to say, because they really needed that depth on the defense, especially on the left side there. And then they get a real solid fourth liner that has playoff experience, Stanley Cup experience. And uh, I, I think this is a really good deal. Plus, Craig Smith uh, just hadn't really been performing as well this season. So he is definitely expendable for Boston. It's not like they were given up something huge. Uh, th yeah, they are all in this year, and they are very scary. I would not want to be facing them in the first round of the playoffs. And I think it makes sense for them to be all in. I mean, they've got the best record in the league. And yet, you know, as of this recording, the top six teams in points are all in the East. So... Clearly, the East is going to be very competitive come playoff time. So to fortify the lineup, even though you have the best record in the league, I think it makes sense for the Boston Bruins. It does. And both guys are on expiring contracts, I believe. And so, you know, it's not a huge investment for them. They're a little bit older. They're both in their early 30s. And so there isn't really a lot of pressure right now to discuss extending a contract. I think this is definitely a situation where they just ride out the rest of the season with these guys, see if they can make that Stanley Cup run and then go from there. Yeah, I think that that looks like the strategy. And it wouldn't shock me if Boston makes maybe one more minor move before the deadline to add a little more depth. But the other the flip side of this to me the Washington Capitals, who are a team that is 
perennially in the playoffs kind of looks like they've face the fact that they're not likely to make it this year. And this is the beginning of at least a retooling, if not a rebuild in Washington. Yeah, that's the first thing I thought of, right? Is that is this a situation where the Washington Capitals are essentially saying, nope, we just don't have it this year. And they're, you know, they're a, a few points outside of the playoffs right now, but not unreasonably so, I would say. Um, it seems like an odd time for them to make this decision, especially because they're just getting Ovi back from uh, being away. And to me, I, I think that it could be them just packing it in, which is be such a shame if that is the case. I, I do think they have one more run in them. Yeah, I didn't expect them to to do this this soon i mean still a week before the trade deadline i figured you know if they if they lost another two or three games between now and next friday yeah maybe that makes sense i mean there are six teams going for those two wild card spots now if you think washington is sort of bowed out that's five teams going for those two wild card spots but you know you look at the roster i would have thought washington would have at least had a chance um and, you know, they could have added at the deadline to enhance that chance. But, you know, they, they look at it as we need to get a little younger, maybe, and we need to retool. Ovechkin's not going anywhere. So clearly, I don't think they're in a full rebuild mode. But five years down the line, this trade may benefit them in a very big way. Oh, absolutely. And, you know, while if you think about the... Bruins first round draft pick this year is likely going to be extremely low in that round. Yeah. Um, that's still like in this particular draft is it's a really good asset to have. So having multiple picks in the first round of this upcoming draft really is going to allow a team like the Caps to not take too many steps back because in a couple of years, at least one of those two picks are probably going to be hitting the NHL. Yeah, and then it also gives them the flexibility if they want to make a trade, they have extra picks to work with that. Uh, or if they if there's one player in this draft that they really want to trade up and get, they can they can use the extra first round pick to do that. It gives them a lot of flexibility going forward. It really does. I just can't help but think like, is this Bruins team unstoppable? <laughs> <laughs> well, there are fans in Tampa Bay and Carolina and Toronto who are hoping you're wrong. But right now, Boston certainly does look like the best team in the league. But the best team doesn't always win the Stanley Cup. Some other breaking news Thursday, uh, and we're recording this Thursday evening. Uh, the New York Rangers holding two players out of their lineup in order uh, for trade purposes is the way it's now being said. Uh, Vitaly Kravstov and Jake LeCision both being held out. Looks like the Rangers may be look, may, looking to make another move before the deadline. Yeah, and you have to kind of try and read between the lines here to see who that might be for. I know Patrick Kane has been constantly rumored here, but you know, is there space for him in the right role? on this team and would it be worth it? Uh, Patrick Kane has certainly been making a show of it as of late and try to up his uh, trade stock. But, you know, like you said, as of recording, we don't have any word on it there. He could be going to somewhere entirely different and the Rangers could be looking at somebody else in, in mind. And we just don't know right now, but it is, I, I think, the deals that have been done in the last week or so have really said, oh, maybe we can't wait until the actual trade deadline day. You know, teams are really going to have to step up and and get it done sooner in order to get the kind of players or exact players that they're looking for. Yeah. And, and that rush, it's not trade deadline day anymore. It's kind of like trade deadline two weeks or three weeks the way this is all playing itself out with the Bo Horvat trade being the first volley fired. And that was what, two, two, two and a half weeks ago already. So yeah, it, it's getting to be a, like a month long move after move after move. And it's exciting, certainly. 
for everybody. We have got a lot more to discuss on this episode of the Locked On NHL podcast. We'll be joined by Erica Ayala for our bi-weekly women's hockey spotlight. We've got all that and a lot more still to come on this episode of the Locked On NHL podcast. But first, Rachel, why don't you talk to us about Bilt Bar? Today's episode is brought to you by Built Bar. If you're looking for a delicious treat but don't want all of the fat and calories, then you got to try a Built Bar. My goal has been to eat a little healthier this year. And if you're like me and you don't want to compromise on taste, then I have got just the thing for you. you got to try Built. With Built, healthy is actually tasty. And what makes them so good? They're covered in 100% real chocolate, and they come in amazingly delicious flavors, flavors like churro, peanut butter brownie, and coconut almond. And they really are healthy. Only 130 calories, 4 grams of sugar, but 17 grams of protein. And now you don't need to wait around to get a box of them. For so long on Locked On NHL, we've been talking about ordering Built Bars at Built.com. You can still do that, but you can also get them at your local Walmart or Sam's Club. Head to your nearest Walmart today. You can go to the pharmacy section. They've got boxes there, a four-bar box of cookies and cream, double chocolate, or coconut puffs. And if you're close to Sam's Club, run in and grab a 13-bar box with our hit flavors, brown batter and churro you can thank me later time now for our bi-weekly women's hockey spotlight here is erica ayala hey hey what do you say hockey fans erica l ayala here your host of locked on kraken and contributor to locked on nhl for the women's hockey spotlight that comes to you every other friday now on today's women's hockey spotlight we're going to talk about the pwhpa they have a little bit of news as well as a series a showcase series happening in tampa we're going to talk about the rivalry series and who won the seven the seven game series between the united states and canada and of course we'll talk about captain canada and a little bit of history that she made and we will close out the women's hockey spotlight talking about the premier hockey federation and the games to watch for the weekend. Let's start with good friend Haley Salvian. I've had her on Locked on Kraken before. Haley Salvian for The Athletic broke that the PWHPA is organizing a formal union and they are negotiating with their investor group at the moment. This signals a closer step for the PWHPA to becoming a full-blown hockey league. Right now they do a barnstorming group and they're different from the PHF in that they have showcases. Again, we'll get into that in a little bit, but there's no set in stone timeline for when the PWHPA's new league will uh, get going, but this is what Jaina Hefford, PWHPA consultant, had to say. We want to see our vision of a professional le- league become a reality as soon as possible, but we're not willing to compromise on doing it right. So don't know what that means just yet, but it is great news for the athletes in particular that there will be a formal union. Now, the PHF has a players association, but they are not formally a union. The CWHL didn't have a union. The NWHL before it uh, did not have a union. So this is a huge step and we cannot wait to see more details. Now, speaking of the PWHPA, they do have a showcase and that will be coming to Tampa Bay. Now we've talked about this before, but it's going to be an exciting showcase and you've got Team Scotiabank versus Team Harvey's. They will play today. That's at 12 p.m. Then you also have Team Sonnet versus Team Adidas at 3 p.m. today, February 24th. On the 25th, Adidas versus Scotiabank at 1 p.m. and Team Sonnet versus Team Harvey's at 4 p.m. And then finally on Sunday, Harvey's versus Scotiabank at 11 a.m. and Uh, Team Adidas versus Team Sonnet at 2 p.m. Those are all Eastern Standard Time. And you can watch on CBC Sports. 
So that's what's going on with the PWHPA. Let's switch gears and talk a little bit about the Rivalry Series. Now, we've talked about this before, but the Rivalry Series is essentially an exhibition tour between the United States and Canada this year, 2022-23. It was a seven-game series. They played in Seattle. They played in Nevada. They were just in Quebec. So they've traveled between the two countries and into a few different markets. And while the United States had an early start, three games consecutive in the beginning, it was Team Canada that was able to complete the back end sweep. There were games Monday and Wednesday of this week, again, both in Quebec and both were dominating performances by Team Canada. 5 1 on Monday, and then another five goals to none on Wednesday. Now, on Monday's game, Marie-Philippe Poulin was able to uh, get to 200 career points for Team Canada whilst wearing the Maple Leaf. She becomes only the fifth player in Team Canada history to do that alongside Haley Wickenheiser, Jana Hefford, who we just mentioned with the PWHPA, Carolyn Willette, who is a bench boss for the senior national team, and Danielle Goyette. So, and Renee Debien had another fantastic performance for Canada, especially, or she played Wednesday, and it is a dominating performance right before World Championships. Now, again, this is a friendly, there technically was a trophy, but we also have to keep in mind that the United States was without their captain, Kendall Coyne Schofield, excuse me, suffered an injury and was not with the team. There are also a lot of young players. And so both teams, uh, Troy Ryan is the head coach for Canada. And then you have John Roblowski uh, or Robleski, excuse me, for the United States. Both know that this is still an evaluation period. We're right at the beginning of a new cycle or four-year period quad, as it's sometimes called. And so not necessarily anything to worry about, we did get to see Aaron Frankel in net for the United States on Monday. We've talked about that in women's hockey uh, spotlight before. So it was good to see some young talent. Also very evident that the United States and Canada in some respects are still very raw. So line combinations, defensive pairings, who's going to be the go-to goalie, who's going to even make the roster come world championships all up for grabs. World Championships will be hosted by Canada in Brampton in early April. And so you're going to want to stay tuned right here on Women's Hockey Spotlight so we know who's making the roster. Uh, probably know that in a little over a month's time, end of March, and we'll talk about it as we get ready for another Women's Worlds. Finally, in closing for this women's hockey spotlight. Let's take you to the Premier Hockey Federation. Now, last time I was on here, I told you I had a hunch about what the PHF was going to do for playoffs. They finally announced what is happening with playoffs. The top four teams will make the playoffs and the semifinals will actually be a series. This is a return to a series. The PHF formerly known as the National Women's Hockey League, did have a three-game series in the semifinals. And in the finals, the Isabel Cup finals, plural, used to be a thing. This year, we're only going to have a one-and-done winner-take-all for the Isabel Cup final, but we will have series in the semifinals. And Boston, the Boston area and Toronto will be hosting. And right now, the only two teams that have clinched one of the four spots are are the Boston Pride and the Toronto Six. Now, we don't exactly know if these will be the final standings. You can see here that the Boston Pride right now is in first place, and they are followed up by, of course, the Toronto Six, Minnesota Whitecaps holding that third place spot, and then the Connecticut Whale right now in fourth. Regardless of if Toronto ends the regular season first or Boston ends the season regular season at first, Either one of those teams will host. They've earned the right to host and have home ice, and they will host in their home cities. So now Toronto won't host at Boston as the top seed, in case that wasn't clear. But what we do know is it's still a fight 
for the last two spots. And right now in the driver's seat, holding on and in control of their own destiny is the Minnesota Whitecaps. Now, they lost a weekend series last weekend to Buffalo. And if you notice, the Buffalo Buttes are at the bottom of the barrel. They've been having lots of what appears to be turmoil. Two players were released from their contracts, mutually released from their contracts. It's been a little bit of a mess, but they did get the weekend sweep over Minnesota, playing spoiler to the Whitecaps, who are very close to clinching one of those four playoff spots. Then you have Connecticut. They will play the Metropolitan Riveters on Sunday at 3 p.m. Eastern time, but they only have one game this weekend, whereas the Minnesota Whitecaps have two shots to get some points and clinch that third place spot. So it's going to be exciting. I will be on the call on ESPN Plus or TSN Plus if you're in Canada, for the Toronto, Minnesota series. So you're not going to want to miss that. I just had my 100th broadcast for the Premier Hockey Federation League overall. It took seven seasons to get to 100 broadcasts, but here we are. And so I'm very excited to continue on throughout the regular season, and you'll probably hear and see me in the postseason as well. All right, that's going to do it, folks, for our women's hockey spotlight here on Locked on NHL. Again, you can follow me at elindsay08. That's E-L-I-N-D-S-A-Y-08 for all things Seattle Kraken and, of course, women's hockey. Let me send you back over to Gil and Rachel. And thanks again to Eric Ayala for the Women's Hockey Spotlight. Rachel, a busy weekend of hockey ahead. Lots of games with a lot of playoff implications, which always adds to the the excitement of it all. And Friday, tonight, you know, a nice schedule of six games. What game stands out right away in your mind? Well, the first one is that Colorado at Winnipeg matchup. I think that's going to be tremendous. And Colorado has been chasing the top teams in the Central. Dallas hasn't been exactly together recently. Um, And with Winnipeg kind of sandwiched in between them right now, I I think that this will be an exciting one if Colorado can gain some points on those top teams. Yeah, that that will be a very interesting game in Colorado getting a little healthier, trying to get back into the thick of a very tight division race. How about two teams in the East that are in that wild card hunt? Buffalo visits Florida. Mm, Yeah, I think that one is going to be huge as well. Like we were talking about earlier in the show, we do have those five or six teams, depending on how you want to count it, uh, who are battling for those two wild card spots. And right now, Buffalo is on the outside looking in. Florida has one of those two spots as of recording, but hasn't been consistent for a while now. And so I I think that uh, it'll be interesting to see what happens if Buffalo decides to make any trade deadline deals to to try and move up, or are they going to just ride it out and wait till next year uh, if they can't make it into the playoffs this year? But Florida, I think, has a lot to prove right now. I feel like they've had a rough season overall and to just get into the playoffs would be a victory at this point. Yeah. And that's last year's president's trophy winners, but a lot of changes made on that roster during the off season Kings visiting the Islanders and East West matchup. Both teams need the points in their fight for playoff spots and uh, should be a good game there. Yeah, absolutely. And you know, the Kings are kind of making their, trip to the a few of the east coast teams right now so and they happen to be running up against all these eastern conference teams that desperately need the points as well (laughs) so it's a understandably difficult timing for them but uh, we'll see what they can take back out west should be a a good matchup saturday three matinees but the the one i'm keeping my eye on the rangers visiting the capitals How will the Capitals respond to this deal? That's a a big question in my mind. 
Well, and also, will the Rangers look any different that night, right? Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> In terms of of any deals, yeah, I think it's a uh, it's a weird weekend because Saturday you have the Rangers at the Caps, and then Sunday those Kings I was just talking about um, are at the Rangers, right? And so they have afternoon back to back games. And the Caps in that matchup also have afternoon back-to-back games that weekend, Saturday and Sunday. The Caps are facing Buffalo, who are those are the two teams that are neck and neck in that playoff race. And and so uh, speaking from experience watching the Flyers, I, I don't know if other teams are different, but afternoon games tend to be rougher mm-hmm. on the routine for players. And so for all these teams to have back-to-back afternoon matchups, I think is going to throw a wrench into some of their systems and you know how they go about things. And we could see some surprising results between those, t- uh, those group of teams, right, that are all working to either keep their playoff positioning or gain playoff positioning. Yeah, those those afternoon games do put a, a little monkey wrench into everything. I know the Islanders often struggle with those as well and have for a very long time. Your Flyers visiting the Devils on Saturday. Can the Flyers give the Devils a good fight in Newark? I don't know. Don't really think so, but we'll see. <laughs> the Flyers have won some interesting games this season. Um you know, they'll be on this, the back half of a back-to-back because they're playing the Habs on Friday. So it, it's going to be a rough weekend for the Flyers overall. And uh, again, with the trade deadline, who knows what the team is going to look like uh, by Saturday. Although I do think those deals will be done later, if at all. Uh, but at any rate, I, I do think that um, that game against the Devils is it's going to be a real tough one for the Flyers to come into New Jersey. Some interesting games later on. Tampa Bay visiting Detroit. The Red Wings, also one of those Eastern Conference teams that is battling for a wild card spot. And it's a tough challenge, but they're hosting Tampa Bay. They are. And they will have just faced the Rangers, who are, uh, they're playing as we're recording this, so we don't know the outcome. Yeah, but that is a, a tough one-two punch for Detroit. But they seem to be, you know, pulling off wins where you might not think so. And you look at the stats head-to-head of Tampa versus Detroit, and Tampa has Detroit beat in every category. But you add, like, the Iserman factor <laughs> to this uh, <laughs> rivalry, and there's, like, a little something there. And I, I think, you know, it, the game's in Detroit. And so I wouldn't guarantee a Tampa win at all. The Colorado Avalanche hosting the Calgary Flames. That is a good rivalry game as well. And the Flames, they're, they're struggling a bit lately, and they need to bounce back and get back into, into things if they want to get out there and make the playoffs. They really do. And again, you know, Colorado is, is looking to get back into playoff form and facing teams like Winnipeg and Calgary is, is a really good test for them to, you know, get back into that Stanley Cup run shape. And for those of you who are up late on the East Coast, uh, Dallas visiting Vegas, that is going to be one heck of a game between two West Conference powerhouses. Yeah, well, like I said, Dallas has been uh, uneven as of late. And uh, I think that playing in Vegas for them is going to be really tough. And, you know, especially with Vegas really trying to make a strong run of it. I I just, I don't know, man. I don't know what's going on with Dallas right now. It's just, (laughs) um, but I, I certainly hope that you know, they can at least make a good game of it in Vegas. Sunday, seven games now that there is no longer uh, NFL action to worry about. Washington in Buffalo, two teams that are in that wild card conversation, and both of them really need the points. Although, again, as we mentioned, after this trade, Washington may be uh, easing off a little bit on this playoff race. Yeah, and, and like I said, this is that back-to-back afternoon game situation. But, uh, you know, we'll, we'll see how that one goes. I'm definitely a lot more interested in this Tampa Bay at Pittsburgh game. 
Yeah. Because that is that is a tough back to back for them, you know, going from Detroit to Pittsburgh uh, Saturday and Sunday. Uh, but uh, again, a, a really good test for them. And the Pens just really need points. That's what it comes down to. So uh, with their facing St. Louis on Saturday and then Tampa on Sunday, there's just all of these back to backs all weekend um, where teams really need to to rack them up. And you know, the goaltending situation in Pittsburgh remains uh, a question mark. Tristan Jarry just getting back into the lineup now, but do they wait for him and see if he's ready? Or do they make a move for a goaltender before the trade deadline? Pittsburgh, one of those teams in that wild card fight as well. And to me, a great game later on, an East-West matchup, Toronto visiting the Seattle Kraken. Yeah, I think uh, these are always good matchups and the Kraken having such a fun season this year. Very much looking forward to that one. Should be a good one. Should be a great weekend of action. Again, I uh, want to thank everybody for joining us today. She's Rachel Donner. You can find her on Twitter at rmiriam. I'm Gil Martin. You can find me at Ice Wars NYR VSNYI. I will be back on Monday interviewing three of our local hosts about the biggest stories from around the NHL. Have a great weekend, everyone. Stay safe, and thanks for listening to the Locked On NHL Podcast.